Hello, Alex here, representing Mike Lively's instructional design team at Northern Kentucky University. You've stumbled onto the fourth installment of a series entitled Texturing 3DX Max and You. The hypothetical scenario we're running with here is that a client has come to us with a mission. They want to get their attraction, this spooky, scary house, online so they can start advertising to people everywhere and get business up. We've done our best to model their haunted house, and now to make it look more real, we're going to actually put a texture on it. Now in the tutorial directly preceding this one, I showed you how to use the Unwrap UV Modifier tool to, lack for a better word, unwrap all the outside edges of the spooky scary house. And that's what you see before you right here. We also exported this into a JPEG format that we could open up in any image editor, whether that be GIMP, a free open source option, or the more standard Photoshop. My friends, now we are finally going to get into Photoshop. I've made this promise since the first tutorial, and now we're finally here. I'm going to teach you some tips and tricks on texturing. Now I went ahead and opened up the JPEG we saved in Photoshop, and as you can see, every surface of the house is here for us to use. But I'm going to get it prepped. So right now we have this background layer. I'm going to right click on it and then have it duplicate itself. So we have two of this layer. It's going to ask me to name it. I'm just going to name this The Mask, keeping up with our scary theme. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a little corny. But anyway, let's delete this background layer by selecting it and then going over to this trash can icon and then clicking on it. It'll ask me if I want to do this for sure, and yes, you do want to do it for sure. Okay, now that we're reduced down to this one layer, we're going to go over here to the Magic Wand tool. We're going to make sure its tolerance up here is pretty high. We're going to go 100, and I'm going to click inside the black here. And it should select everything that's black inside of this. Now, you'll notice that there are certain sections that aren't selected here. Go ahead and hold down the Shift key so that we get that plus sign by the magic wand. And then click inside of there. It'll add those sections to our selection. Now that that's done, we're going to go up top to the Select menu and go down to Inverse. I'm going to press the Delete key on my computer. Don't freak out. It's normal that everything disappeared. This is actually part of our grand plan or scheme. Go ahead and press Control and D at the same time to deselect everything. And go back over here to the, the Mask layer and click on the little lock to make sure it's locked. Now we have a see-through stencil we can start putting textures on for our haunted house. Before we go any further, it might be a good idea to stop and actually talk about the process of texturing. It's very premeditated. You're going to have to sit down and think about how you want the finished product to look like. Now our clients have given us specific instructions. If you think back to the photographic references we used in earlier tutorials, you'll remember this yellow brick house. That yellow isn't authentic. They actually painted yellow over the natural brick. The clients hated this. They restored the building to its original look, and they want this model to reflect that. So I know that I'm going to have to make the outside walls brick. They also expressed a want for the roof to be kind of a, a grayish, a darker gray color, so I have to keep that in mind as well. They also want the windows and doors to be true reflections of what the actual house has. So I've already gone online. I went to Google, or you can go use your favorite search engine, and just looked around for certain textures. I found this cool window. There's this cool brick texture. And of course, a door. <laughs> now this probably goes without saying, but if, I didn't, but if I didn't say it, then I feel like I'd be doing you guys a disservice. Now, if you're doing this for actual professional work and not a hypothetical scenario, you can't just go online and grab whatever you see there and use as a texture. Copyright's involved, and that can get messy. So you'll want to look for royalty-free images or actually buy images you can use for texturing, and that's no big deal. But for the purpose of this exercise, just find whatever you want on the Internet. Have fun with it. It's your house, for crying out loud. 
But since I already have all of these elements for the texture ready, I'm going ahead and start implementing them into Photoshop. Okay, now this is obviously the side of the building. So is this. And this looks like it's the front of the house. I can speculate this because of the notch here representing the bottom of the porch and this one here representing the top of the porch. Now if I didn't know this for sure, here's a clever trick. Go back to 3ds Max and actually click inside the Edit UVWs window on any surface. Now that's going to show on the model itself where I'm selecting. I can also select on the model and also see where it's selecting in on the UVW map. This is really handy. I know this is the front of the building now and that this is indeed the side of the house we're seeing right here. You're going to want to remember this because a lot of the nooks and crannies of this house can only really be found by doing that. Now I'm going to go back into Photoshop with this knowledge and get to texturing. Now I'm going to add a layer here and drag it below the mask layer. Make sure the mask layer is always on top. This is the stencil we're, so that we can see through. And I'm just going to go up to File. I'm going to go down to Place. Once the menu comes up, I'm going to find those images that I've already prepared for texturing. Now in this case, I have the master folder Spooky Scary where I have my individual 3ds Max files, the reference image, and then the exported UVW template. But I also have this folder here called Spooky Textures where all of my images for texturing are located at. And the first thing I'm going to put down is the brick. And I actually prefer this darker brick here, so I'm going to select that and then hit Place. And there it is inside of Photoshop. Now I'm going to move this around a little bit and actually shrink it a bit because I don't want the bricks to be too large. That looks like it's about right. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Why not? We're having fun. I'm going to go up to this check mark and press it. Now if you look over at the layers panel, you'll notice that that new layer I made now has the name of Textures Brick which is the name of the file I actually placed. And you'll notice there's this little icon here, the smart object, meaning I can still make it larger or smaller and edit it without it actually destroying any of the original placed file. Now it won't destroy the original file that was made, it's still just bringing it in, but it will allow you to edit it its size and scale without rasterizing it. But for our sakes, we don't need that right now. We're just gonna go to rasterize layer. All right, I'm going to go over to just the general selection, the shape selection tool. And making sure that I'm still in the layer textures brick, I'm going to select every place that that brick should be. I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. Now I'm going to hit Control V to paste it. We have that brick part duplicated and pasted on. Now if I just drag this over, you'll notice that it doesn't really mesh well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Edit, Transform, I'm going to have it flip horizontally. That way the brick matches the other side perfectly. Now to make sure it's perfect, we can go in a little bit. Instead of being 50%, I'm going to go into 100%. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit so I can see kind of where the bricks overlap. Now, on closer inspection, the brick doesn't look as perfect as I would like. So I'm going to move it a little bit around, and there we go. If we go back over to the Layers panel, you'll notice that when we copy and pasted that brick, it made another layer on top of the original brick textures layer. Now what I would normally do is that I would take every surface that's going to be brick and go ahead and copy and paste it and lay all of that out. And when I was done, I would select all the layers that have brick in them, go over to this little drop down menu, and go down to where it says Merge Layers. And it's going to actually combine all of those layers together into one. So now I just have one brick layer. I'm going to go back over to the selection tool and clean it up a bit so that there's no overlapping on the places I know don't need brick. And we have our front wall. Texturing might take you quite a long time, but that's fine. A texture can make or break a 3D model. You can have an amazing model. But if it's outside doesn't look hot, it's not going to be hot. <laughs> There's no way around that. I mean, we all understand that. So go ahead and take time to finesse your texture and make it as awesome as you want it to be. We've covered a lot of ground. 
and in an effort to make these tutorials more manageable and concise, I'm going to stop here. Now I've already shown you the techniques you need to go ahead and create this texture by yourself. So I'm going to let you do just that. Finish this texture before moving on to the next tutorial. Have loads of fun. And when we meet again, we're going to take our created texture and then bring it into 3ds Max where the magic will happen. Guys, you're going to be really impressed with what you see. You're going to love it, and you're going to want to start modeling all kinds of stuff. Until then, this is Alex, representing Mike Lively's instructional design team at Northern Kentucky University. It's been a pleasure helping you, and I cannot wait to bring this into Max. You should be excited, because I am.